I've been through it. I've been into DNC 29. I've been through it a few times. What have you got? Like, you been into it? Yeah. Nothing like huge is jumping out. Like, there's a lot in there, but nothing like, nothing we haven't discussed before. Like, the, like, this, this all things being created spiritual, going through the Trump's blowing. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would tell you something funny. So, like, you get to about verse 20 and it starts describing, like, what's going to happen to the world and the wicked, like, before the before the start of the millennium and the second coming, right? Yeah. So, Jamie's reading that to the kids, and, uh, like, stood in the morning before school, and they're all kind of, like, half paying attention. <laughs> and it gets to the verse where it's like, and their tongues will be plucked out and their eyes will fall out of their sockets. No, their flesh will fall off. The their, flesh falls from the their flesh bones. will fall from their bones and their <laughs> eyes will fall out of their sockets. And Ellie was like, whoa, 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 wait. And that, back, back up a little bit. Hold on. <laughs> what? It's like glance over that part. Like, like, what? Like, what? Like, like, kind of like started paying attention just enough to catch that. I was like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. But back up a little bit. So Jamie read it again and the kids were like, you mean there's gonna be literal zombies? Eyes, <laughs> flesh falling from their bones. But like not so much zombies as you know the result of radiation. It's like they're just <laughs> <laughs> not zombies. Not pleasant. That's Either way, nuclear fallout. Yeah. Don't be afraid. It's just horrible <laughs> nuclear fallout. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, it's like, you know, like I explained, it was like, no, guys, like, their tongues will be uttered, and then this is describing their bodies decaying. What it's saying is that they'll be dead. <laughs> Although, a description but of... like, real dead. <laughs> <laughs> like, mega death. Like, yeah, <laughs> mega death. <laughs> That's what it was. That's what I was wondering yeah. what mega death... Uh, how, how could death be more advanced than well, just Miracle death? Well, Miracle Max can't do anything. <laughs> anything. Miracle Max, if yeah, you're mega like dead. Saw, right? It's a huge difference between mostly dead and all dead. Skin falling off the bones and eyes popping out. That's all, mega death. That's yeah. all dead. That's all dead. Can't do anything. That's what mega death <laughs> Can't do anything with that. Wonders from the 80s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, although it does speak to there being <laughs> bodies that are like openly decaying that the animals are eating does speak to I was talking to Jamie about it I was like the thing that the thing to me that that does actually suggest is there being such a large amount it's like how many dead bodies does there have to be for people to not be able to keep up with burying them that's like the tsunami like that's that's not good So, anyway, that was a funny story. I was laughing about it. Jamie was telling me about that. I was laughing. Kind of interesting. I can list the, tr like, the... You said it twice, like, the Trump thing. <sighs> Sound like, speak with the, preach the gospel with the voice of a Trump. That, too, but, like, it just it went through, like, the border and, what ha like, what happened to the Trumps. It really kind of lays out the whole plan of salvation. DNC 29. Those through the pre-mortal life, like what happened, like what happened in the war in heaven, like coming here, like your free agency, like what's gonna happen, like and the, the thing that I was explaining to the kids, it's like like the hen gathering or chickens under her wings. It's like it's like no guys, like Christ makes it very clear that there is there's there's a couple of there's a couple of verses in there that just made my heart sad to think about it describing like like him describing like the joy of the righteous and what you're going to have and being under his protection <laughs> and, like the joy and peace that that's going to be to like be with him and, and have his protection and then be with him in the millennium and rise with him in the resurrection and the glory and all of that that comes with that and like like when just like reading all of that and then reading that that they will not hear me, so my blood won't save them. And there's another one that, like, it's just like, I read it, and it's like, made my heart sad. You can just hear Christ, like, 
him saying the last time I hear him saying hear him a sad heart. Yeah, how, how sad oh. that makes him. He's like, he's like, he's like, they won't hear me. I can't save them because they won't. They won't let me. I can't <laughs> save them because they won't let me. Grace has a talk on the like on the effects of the atonement this week. And I'm like, what a great subject, or like, you know, like like how the atonement works. You know what I mean? Right. It's just just about the atonement, like. You should just get up there and be like, my subject is like, why the atonement works? Because. And <laughs> then <laughs> just sit down. <laughs> because. because. <laughs> or I thought it would be funny, like, because that's actually like a really. I don't know, it's a really serious subject. <laughs> yeah, somebody get up there and be like, I don't know. I know that it does. I'm 10. How am I to understand all of this? <laughs> yeah. anyway. You've been studying it for 30 years. Do you understand it all yet? I don't know. What's it your just... point about the what you, what, like? What's your thoughts about like the Trumps and just talking about that? Oh, I just thought it was interesting that I listened to it twice. <laughs> like it went through it, like the Trumps will blow and then it did it again, like real fast. And then, uh, of course, there's the micro lesson on God answering prayers, even when we won't understand the, the answer. Are uh, you talking about spiritual, physical, spiritual? Yeah. Like, I answered this question for you because you asked, and I answered it in a way that you could understand. But well, Joseph was that. clearly like, how does the creation and all that really work? And he was like, mm -hmm. No way you understand this answer. <laughs> yeah. uh, How can I dumb this down? <laughs> and then temporally. And then spiritually. And then spiritually again. It's like, but my works are actually endless. Yeah. So, but you asked, and I wanted to give you something that you can chew on. You know, and that like, and like, just like that alone is a profound statement and thought process. Like, there's a lot of implications to Things are created spiritually, then physically, then spiritually again. Well, <laughs> again, it, 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 lends, it lends like a, just a different way to think about it again. So things are created spiritual. The spirit is eternal, right? But then they're created temporal. <laughs> then temporal is the physical. Like our physical bodies don't even anywhere near match the power of our spirits. Right. So God was like, how do we, how do we, deal with all of this energy like what's the best way to displace all this energy throughout the universe I know bodies temporal you know what I mean and anyway I just I find it I've been pondering I find it interesting that, that that's like we come down here into a tabernacle like they, they call it tabernacle of clay like into like a literal like temporal situation like you house your eternity in and the whole point of that is be like, hey, look, look, like you've you've encompassed your eternity with this just just this fleshy thing. Like it was never meant to be all the time. Like it it's starting to die the second it was born. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like there's another level. There's a level up. <laughs> yeah, like there's a level up. Like this is this is not everything. Like not this only is your glory days, not just high school, but like Earth <laughs> is not your Earth is glory, not your glory time. Days. Like Earth is you. Earth is you being depowered, and then like, it, like in the novel, of, you in the novel of your life, it's it's the introductory page, not even the foreword to the book. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm gonna give you a physical form and give you a small taste of the actual eternal capacity and potential of what that can do. The ability for creation and creativity that it, that it that it that it happens in the physical form. And the thing is, is the spirit was created and the spirit is going to be eternal, right? So that spirit was going to exist as something forever, no matter which way you sliced it. He gave us bodies and a direction so that we could control the outcome of our eternities. He'd help us control the outcome. You know what I mean? Like once it was created, like it's eternal. It's going to exist forever. I know it's like mind blowing to think of, but it has no beginning or no end. So the minute you were created, yeah. you were going to exist forever on that, what plane? I can't remember who said it, but that was a that was a 
paradigm shifting understanding for me when eternity was actually explained to me in a way that I understood it. Like eternity doesn't mean going on for a really, really, really long time. Yeah. If something is eternal, like it, has it means end. it has no beginning and no end. Like yeah. it has a beginning. And it, it has, has an end. end. Yeah. So etern like, so like something being eternal, like doesn't mean that it exists for a long time. Something mean something being eternal means that it always has existed and always will exist. Like, so like, anyways, like, I said that and it didn't make as much sense out loud as it does in my head. I'm like, there's got to be a level of spiritual understanding. I think that was on my mission when I read the King Follett Discourse by Joseph Smith. And he held up his ring and says, this is a circle. If at no. any point that I, yeah, if I, mean, I like, literally, this, like, yeah. if I, if I break this hoop, it's a circle. But if at any point I break this to create a beginning, it will lay out and have an, end. have an end. <laughs> so we're talking about physical, spiritual, like spiritual, physical, spiritual, and that like the one thing that I excuse me that I have really been pondering about I is I like the I never at any time have I given a commandment that is temporal. Like, all of God's commandments are spiritual in nature, and so it's like, like, once again, implication, application. Think about the implication of, like, of that. So, like, so I've been, I've been thinking about that because, like, so, like, right now, masks. Right? But the brethren, the, the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, like, was a Raz, Razban stood up and said, I'm not saying this as a doctor, I'm saying this as an apostle. With, like, wear your mask in church. So, like, and for me, that was the beginning of the end. Like, regardless how I feel about it in any other context, when I go to church, I wear my mask because the apostle said to. It's a principle of obedience at that point. Yeah. I wear, I'm putting on my mask because the apostle said to. So, that, that's the beginning and the end of the conversation for me. And so, yep. I just. That's the point at which I change my opinion. Oh, yeah. I don't want to blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And they stand up and say that. I'd be like, oh, okay. Well, I was wrong. wrong. Good. Good. All right. Cool. Yeah, I, I was wrong. Yeah. So I'm going to wear my mask now. And then you can ponder and think, oh, these are all the reasons. I am not so smart that <laughs> Jesus isn't allowed to tell me when I'm wrong. <laughs> or not so not so smart that Jesus isn't allowed to tell me to do something, even when I don't understand why I'm being asked to do it. And I'm not so smart as to be able to come up with all of the reasons why he's asking me to do it. Like, and it's, like, it's, it's the high, like, it's arrogant to but assume that I can. That it's thought of as smart to think of all the reasons to disagree. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's not smart. Smart is like, oh, the apostle said it? Cool. Right. One less thing. One less thing. <laughs> like, you think you've made this point a thousand times. Like, but that's the point of having modern day prophets and apostles. So when you're in the world and there's these hot button issues that are much debated with different aspects of society and culture and news and science, screaming opposite opinions, like, you look at the prophet, and the prophet and the prophet and the apostles say, do this. And it's like, oh, great. I don't have to slog through a, a world of contradictory information to try to, to figure out what actually is true or isn't true or what's overreaching or yada, yada, whatever. The prophet said, like the apostle said, wear a mask at church. Okay. He's a king. He's a king. Easy. I can do this. I can turn my head and look at the stick. <laughs> and it's like, like and that's the funny thing. Like, that's the evolution of your faith, right? Because like when I was a missionary and when I was younger, I did try to come up with all the reasons why. But then the thing that, sorry, the thing that always blew my mind, and it, like I remember it back at earrings. You know what I mean? No earrings for dudes, one uh, for women. So like. It, you know what I mean? The multiple piercings and the belly button rings, and right. et cetera, et cetera. And that was like a real line in the sand. And it was like, if you can't, if you can't follow that, <laughs> like what makes you think? You can follow the big commandments with the hand. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, or it's like, like, no, I've got it. You know, like I'm going to do this and I'll gather Israel and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, that's awesome. But it's like. If the apostles say to do this... If you're holding on to those little rebellions... Then that's too much. How long did that take me? Let's time yeah. it. You ready? Yeah. 
one one thousand, two one thousand. <laughs> Done. And it's like, is it annoying? Yeah. <laughs> I have never met anybody that's like, I love the masks. <laughs> <coughs> well, they're all, they're all ninjas. Yeah. So they don't talk about it. They yeah. Aren't trained. Yeah. You don't, you don't, you never heard anybody say it because you don't see those guys. Not ever. <laughs> Honestly, if you hear somebody say they love a mask, it might be the last thing you ever hear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you did. Uh, uh, to Curse the rat. the Yakuza, but <laughs> here we are, here we are. <laughs> but you know, like, it's the principle of like, like, faith has evidence, right? Like people like, 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 like when Line said that, like, faith is like, well, no, it's the, uh, it's out of the um, Bednar talk. It's like a key component to faith is evidence. Faith yeah. is the evidence of things hoped for. I know. That's it's like that's just yeah. it. be like people think it's like faith is blind exception. It's like, be like, no, it's no, not. it isn't. No, it's not. Faith is the evidence of the all the things you've been hoping for. It's like you know why I put on my mask when the apostle says to put on your mask because I have a lifetime. Why is that of so empty? I don't know. It's kind of funny, isn't it? I have a lifetime. Ha ha! Fucking but interesting. Yeah. <laughs> a lifetime of realizing of experiences that teach me that when I follow the commandments and when I follow the prophets. I'm happier. That's the evidence that I've been giving. So at a certain point, you stop looking a gift horse in the mouth, don't you? <laughs> you <think. laughs> like, <laughs> like at a certain point, you're like, hey, you know what? I do what these guys say, and my life is better. And it brings me closer to Christ. So I don't question, I don't care what they say because I've learned through through mountains of evidence given to me that when I follow the I prophets, like, I'm happier. They come out and they're like, wear your mask. You're like, hmm, an eternity of evidence saying that when they talk, it's right. But mm. this is the one. Here I draw my line in the sand. Yep. Like, why? Like, yeah, what? No, I don't buy this. Yeah. I'm going to lump them in with the liberals on this one. Yeah. <laughs> or whoever, you or know who, what I mean? Yeah. It's, it, it, and it's like, yeah, so it's just like, and it's not like it's it's not about the mask or about what I feel about any of that. It's about it's about simple obedience, and it's not blind obedience. It's completely evidentiary based obedience. The scientific the scientific method says that when I repeat an experiment and receive the same and receive the same results from that test, peer reviewed study says then I give the experiment to somebody else and you do the experiment and you yeah. receive the same results from that You're test. Like, hey, Josh, <laughs> I that find. I find I'm happy. I've been doing this test for 40 years now. That when I keep the commandments, I find I'm, I'm, I'm more I'm happy. happier. You? Yeah. Yes. You know what else? No, 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 no. My hypothesis is that if I keep the commandments, I'll be more happy. How'd it go for you? <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Me and everybody that I know that keeps the commandments are happy. And it's like I've got when, a lot of peer review when I confirmation. when I change the variables of those stud well, of the study by not keeping the commandments, I find that the results change and I become less happy. What about no, not just all the commandments? What if you just stop keeping one or two? You know, and it's like you know, like and obviously nobody's perfect, but like I used to say this to missionaries on my mission, like I was like elder hunt, elder hunt, like no, it's the spirit of the law, and I'd be like, guy, if you can't follow the letter of the law. You don't understand the spirit of the law. You don't understand you don't, the law well enough. You don't to understand be the law well enough to know it. when the spirit is telling you that this situation actually is. It's, it's C.S. Needs Lewis's, to be needs to be handled C.S. differently. Lewis's point, like that that logical fallacy that the sinner understands sin, understands sin, and be like the yeah, sinner understands nothing about sin. The sinner understands everything about indulgence. Christ yeah. understands everything about sin because he's, he's the only temptation. one that resisted <laughs> it. You learn sin not by indulgence, by resistance. Yeah. That, so, that like, yeah, that like, what's this goody two shoes going to tell me about sin? And be like, everything. So I, because he's not paid its wages like you have. So like, I like to me, that's the principle of like, I've at no time have I given a, a temporal law. All of my laws are spiritual because like, I think that there's a very real litmus test for you personally. <laughs> when a commandment is given, when an instruction is issued, like, where are you, like, what does it tell you about where you are at spiritually if your first instinctual reaction to a prophetic counsel is rebellion? Yeah. 
I don't even do that. <laughs> like that should. <clears throat> That's a check that I I found like that's a like that's a good litmus test for me personally. Like, how am I responding to the things that I'm told? Because like I said, like I have a lifetime of evidence that says listening to these guys leads to a better life. Yeah. All right, we gotta get in.